Hello? So if you do a lot of art like this, or designs that are heavily based on using Booleans, then you're probably using the wrong software for it. So the same way that ZBrush is specialized towards sculpting and it really lends itself towards that task, there's also software that is specialized in creating these types of shapes and it is not Blender. So we are going to use Fusion 360. Oh my eyes. I don't think this thing has a dark mode. All right, so let's move this over here so we can get a good look at it. This is good enough. And I haven't used this since like 2017, but it's so intuitive because most of it is done with like these buttons that we should be able to create this shape uh, with relative ease. Of course, I'm still gonna try to describe what I'm doing. So we're gonna start off with a sketch, click where we want that sketch to be. And we have all sorts of tools to pick from. I'm just gonna go with a rectangle. And this is a corner to corner rectangle by default. So I'm just gonna pick center rectangle instead and draw out that shape. So a cool hotkey we have in uh, Fusion because it does a lot of things is Q. If we have a sketch, we can press Q, select that face we just created, pull it out. All of a sudden we have a solid. We can also press Q to fill it some edges, for example. So we can select this, this, and as you can see, we can select through the mesh so we don't need to rotate as much and do that. We can also press Q to uh, sort of pull out these edges. So Q, I think, uh, is called push pull and it does all sorts of stuff. Uh, let me actually try to get these dimensions correct. So this, oh, I'm messed up with the navigation because it's not like Blender. Uh, this seems about right, I think. That seems all right. Okay, so moving on, we can press the S key for the search menu, which also combines it with uh, the favorites that you get in Blender. So it's like two in one. So I can click on the cylinder, which I already pinned previously at some point in my life. And let's just pull this all the way through and it automatically switches to a, a cutter. So it's just so intuitive. There's not a lot of hockeys, as you can see, just press Q for anything that you want to maybe adjust. And uh, one more thing, you can see here at the bottom, everything I'm doing generates uh, history. So that means, for example, if I press Q and try to edit this fillet, Notice how they're all being affected. So that's because I did all of those with a single action here. So I could remove that or I can move these things around. I can go back all the way to the start, make some changes and it will propagate all the way through. But for concepting, sometimes having all these things here can be a hindrance because you might try to do something and it complains that it's gonna break something further down the line. So I'm gonna get rid of that very quickly by right clicking here and tell, tell it that I don't want to capture design history. So I wanna live dangerously. That doesn't mean that I can't make changes anymore, but for example, if I click on this face and I press Q, notice how it's not really trying to guess anymore what I wanna do. I clicked on this face, this fillet, that's the one that's gonna be modified and it's done. No more uh, propagating changes throughout the, the construction history. Uh, let's see what else we want to do. Let's just push this down. And we can also select the entire thing and mirror it. So I'm trying to use the buttons. I think I do have some hotkeys set, but just so you know where everything is. Mirror plane, I want to mirror across there. And let's not join it for now. Yeah, let's create a new body. Press Q, pull this down because it seems very thin. And now let's cut through the side right here. So let's try that. And let's sketch on this face. because It makes the most sense. And then go with a rectangle again. Uh, something like that. Press Q again, select these faces, and then just go all the way through. Easy peasy. We can also chamfer those edges. So press C, or Q doesn't work for chamfer. It only does fillets. So you want a special hotkey for your chamfer. I bound it to C. And uh, it looks kind of similar. I mean, it's not gonna be too exact. 
but I think it works. You know what? It doesn't quite work. So I'm going to select these two faces and pull them up. Nope, that's not the way I want to pull it. Pull this face up as well. And uh, I'll mirror the bottom later. Right now I'm just going to go with this. And next I'm going to cut these holes, for example. So let's do that. We're going to go with another sketch. And for the curvature here, because it's following this circle, as you can see, what I'm thinking is we can just use an offset. So I'm going to click on that and tell it that I want to offset this circle. So this is just a 2D sketch. We're not actually uh, model modeling anything yet. So I'm just going to go all the way here and give it that thickness that's right here. That's good enough. And let's do another offset. There's a hotkey for like utilizing the same tool, but again, I'm trying to keep things simple. Let's give it that sort of thickness that goes all the way there. We don't really have to worry about making room for chamfers because here, chamfers are done uh, outwards, I think. Or I guess we'll see. So let's just press Q. Oh, I forgot one thing for my sketch. Can I re-edit this? There is a way of re-editing your sketch. I just don't remember. Sketch. That's the last sketch I made. Oh, it's still there. It's still there, actually. <laughs> cool. So what I wanted is to draw a line right here, which I forgot. So even though we're not capturing all of that history, you can always go back to previous sketches you've made and reutilize them. Or just press Ctrl Z. One thing to note. So again, I'm done with the sketch. I'm going to press Q and I've created this shape right here. So click on that and rotate the camera so we can see how we punch all the way through and the sketch is hidden afterwards, but it's still there. It just does it automatically so it doesn't get in the way, which is pretty neat. And uh, one of my favorite things to do in Fusion are fillets. So we can select our edges and do this very easily. But here's why I like them so much. We can, for example, use the move tool or uh, rather click on this face first and then activate the move tool. Place our move tool wherever we want. I want it right here, for example. And watch this, we can rotate it and notice how the fillet isn't breaking. I guess it breaks at some point, <laughs> right? But we can rotate this so easily and the fillets just adjust to that new rotation. And if you do have trouble, let me undo this. We can actually just delete those fillets very easily and notice how it, it goes back to what it had before automatically. So we don't have to do any sort of fixing there. So let's undo that. What I actually wanted to show you is that we can, for example, use Q again to, oh, it's press pull. I thought it was push pull. So we can select this face. And I think because of that constraint I use with the sketch, if I push this all the way over here, it almost looks like it's flattening, but what's really going on is it's trying to uh, respect or use that imaginary offset that we defined before. So it's trying to always follow a larger version of this circle, which is pretty interesting. Again, the software is sort of designed for this sort of stuff, so it's really, really cool. And uh, let's do this cut that sort of goes upwards. I'm just trying to do all the, the big shapes, all the the big booleans first. So sketch, and I'm just going to sketch on this plane. I'm going to start with a line. I can do this. And just click over here. And uh, there's so much things we can do with sketching, like, but I'm going to go with something really simple. There's a constraint called parallel, for example. So I can click on this edge and tell it that I want it to be parallel with this edge. And you're going to see it jump a little. There we go, and now they're parallel. And uh, I'm not sure if these are actually parallel, but I just sort of wanted to demo that. We can uh, change it later, it doesn't matter. No worries. So this time, I'm going to select the entire body, click on split body, and then select this edge right here. This is my splitting tool. You can select multiple splitting tools. Uh, just click OK. And finally, delete that piece. Don't need it anymore. Q, let's fill it. All of these 
And yeah, I can see now that this sort of angle is a lot more horizontal, but that's not a problem in Fusion. All we have to do is select that face and this one too. Let's activate our move tool and simply rotate. Ta-da! And the fillets automatically just go with the flow. <laughs> they adapt, which is pretty awesome. But I actually want to make them larger, so Q. And this isn't going to look exactly like this. That's not really what I'm going for. I'm just trying to show you some of the cool things that this specialized software can do. For example, I can even... I believe I could actually delete all of this. And it just does that. It goes back to the full shape we had before, which is a bit trickier to do in Blender. So we can induce so much stuff. I can actually get rid of the circle as well, I think, if I select it and press delete. Wow. So it really is designed for this kind of stuff. And uh, what else can we do? Oh, this. Okay. So I'm just going to do, there's a specialized tool for making like screw holes, but I'm just going to do a, a cylinder right here. Uh, it's kind of right here. Not exactly. All right. And I'm not going to punch all the way through because I want to reutilize this. Or actually it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do another circle inside of this. Make it smaller, pull it out. And our dimensions are totally wrong. This is supposed to be a lot thicker, but that is not a problem because we can just press Q, select the outside of that cylinder, and pull it out. And you see these, this threading right here? Watch this. We can press S to search, uh, type in thread, yep, and select this. Ta-da! It's almost like the software was designed for this type of style. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really made more for uh, for manufacturing that kind of stuff, where uh, measurements or accurate measurements are really important. But here, we don't care about all of that. I actually turned off uh, incremental move. Oh, I didn't turn off snapping. But you can set up uh, some defined uh, value for snapping if you really need precise measurements, which I do not. So let's move this down. And let's give it a, a chamfer, why not? A little bit of a chamfer. Maybe not that large. Cool. And uh, I, oh yeah, let's punch through finally. Can I actually select that? It's a bit tricky. All right, select that. Go all the way through. Boop. Sort of fixes itself. And that grid is getting in the way. Let's pull this up. So I'll time-lapse the rest of this video because at this point I'm just using the same tools again and again and hopefully you get the idea. And I'm not telling you that you have to use Fusion because it does have some drawbacks. For example, it's Autodesk software. <laughs> but for some reason, in my educational license, which is like five years old, is still active. And I know that there are like hobbyist licenses that are free for several years. But we do need to face the fact that at some point, because it's Autodesk, you'll, have, you'll probably have to pay for some sort of license. But there's alternatives as well. For example, I've seen uh, Plasticity, which is still in beta, but it looks so promising. And I actually wouldn't recommend Moi 3D, not because I think it's bad, I think it's a really powerful tool. And it's way faster than Fusion 360, if you can believe that. But it's not very good if you need to do a lot of changes. So, um, yeah, there's no press-pull in uh, Moi 3D is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so it lends itself better to more confident artists that don't need to press Control-Z all the time. Which is not me. I, I love my Control-Z. Wow, this looks so much better without the grid. And of course, because it's CAD, we can still, for example, uh, delete this chamfer if we don't like it anymore. Or we can delete the entire hole if we want to. Gone. Or we can make these faces go even lower. Anything you want to do. Uh, within reason, I guess. <laughs> There's still limits. Oh, and one more thing to know, if you actually want the threading to show up when you export, when you create it, you might want to click on models. So that way it's like 
physically there. So I exported it as an STL, not sure if there's a better format, brought it into Blender, applied one of the Armor Toolkit Studio HDRIs, and uh, I'll just apply a shiny metal. Like, looks awesome. <laughs> Automatically looks awesome. Actually, there is one more thing I want to mention, a trick, if you will. So you see this bevel right here? Well, you don't, because there is no bevel. If we go into solid mode, it's super sharp. How do we do that? Very easy. Just select your mesh, go to your material, go all the way to the bottom where it says normal, and then click on a bevel node, and then just adjust the settings to your liking. So don't use too large a value. You want to keep it small. For example, if I do this, it looks horrible, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a fake bevel. It's based off of normals, not real geometry. So you want to reserve it for very, very small edges that you just couldn't be bothered to actually uh, bevel for real. So very handy trick and uh, happy doing whatever you want to do.